Hello, and welcome to my channel. BQ recently sent over a few things for me to test out. For the P1S, we have the Panda Revo Hot End, the Panda Jet, we have the Frostbite and Glacier Build Plates. BQ claims the Panda Revo has up to 40 millimeter cube flow rate and with a max temp of 300 degrees Celsius with rapid nozzle swaps. I will be testing this out later in the video. Not much to say about the jetpack. It's lighter than the stock cover and looks cooler. And oh yeah, you can custom print wherever you want in this little removable cover space. With the frostbite, it's PLA and pet G only. While the glacial build plate, um, you can do ABS with that along with some other ones. I do really want to test out the glacial build plate um, and I will be purchasing some ABS in the future to test that out. Hey, sorry for pulling you away from the video, but I have to ask, can you please subscribe and like this video? It really helps my channel out, and I really appreciate it. Thank you, and now back to your regularly scheduled content. Okay, let's get all these parts installed now. First, we got to take this cover off. This is attached by magnets. It snaps right off. Then I'll pop off the connector. Really easy to pop off. Um, I'll set this aside for now because I'm going to have to take out this fan later. Okay, then we'll remove the connection for the fan and the thermostat that connects to the hot end. Again, just like the fan for the cooling shroud, these pop right off. Up next, removing the screws. Um, sorry, my hands got in the way here. As you can see, these are just the two screws that attach the nozzle and hot end assembly to the printer. Once these are removed, I will also remove the fan. Now that the hot end assembly is removed, I am going to remove these two screws here because I'll have to reuse the fan for the Revo. Before installing the fan on the Revo, make sure to install the wiring like I have here. Once the fan is installed on the Panda Revo, it's time to install it back onto the print head. One thing I noticed is the thermostat wires are a little long and they're really stiff. Now that the Panda Revo is installed on the printer, it's time to swap out this fan from the stock cover to the Panda Jet. Uh, two screws hold it in. Um, remove these two screws, then once removed, just screw it onto the uh, Panda Jet. Really simple. Um, this is a very straightforward upgrade. If I wasn't filming, I could have done this in two minutes. Once the fan is installed on the Panda Jet, reattach the connector on the print tool head. This will snap right back into place, just like the stock cover. Uh, they both have magnets. Once the Panda Revo and Panda Jet are installed on the printer. I swapped out the stock PI build plate for the Frostbite, because uh, I mainly print with PLA and PETG. Um, I really want to get some ABS to test out the Glacial build plate. Future video. Once that is all done, um, recalibrate your printer. Just go back to whether you have a P1S or X1C or P1P, uh, just go to your printer's calibration, recalibrate it. Okay, now that everything's installed, time to get to printing. Let's see how good this hot end is. All parts were printed at 220 degrees Celsius with Polymaker Panchroma COP. Um, it's really close to PLA, and I have a bunch of it. And it's one of the main filaments I print with, and that's why I went with it. In doing my research, uh, there was a lot of claims that people had that the Panda Revo actually printed 10 degrees hotter. So it report, it may report 220, but it was actually 230. So one of the things I did to test this out is my first print was a temp tower. Um, this is stock settings, this first one here. And as you can tell, it's not bad. Uh, you can tell as it gets a little bit, you know, below 205, overhang has become a little rough. And at, two t at 190, the top is really rough. Now here is the same print on the Panda Revo. Um, overhangs look a lot better. Um, but 
but we still have the same rough top surface at 190. Um, if there really was a 10 degree difference between the two printer or two hot ends, I would expect to see on stock that 195 would have this as well. Uh, but I'm not seeing that. Um, besides slightly better overhangs at lower temperatures, there's not a whole lot of difference. And when I mean slightly, I do mean slightly. You can tell by the side by side here. Um, overall, pretty dang similar. Next up, I did a tolerance test on stocks with stock parts. This printed exactly how I'd expect, with only the .05 being fused. Um, with how this model is on a .4 nozzle, I'd expect that. Same exact results with the Panda Revo. That's a good thing. I wouldn't expect it to be worse. Uh, next test was a overhang test with this overhang tower here. Um, on stock settings, we can start to see around 50. There's some issues. Um, I'm not sure what happened between 50 and 60, because right at 50, there's a little issue. Then up to 60, it's fine. And it starts degrading a lot. So I'm not sure if that's something in the model I got or an overhang issue in itself. With Panda Revo, I get the exact same error at 50 degrees. And between 50 and 60, it looks all right. Then after 60, you start seeing the degraded overhangs. So again... There's not a lot of difference. This may just be chalked up to how it's sliced and how the printer treated it. Because that's that line at 50 just threw me off a little bit. But being that it's on both prints, this is a good sign for the Panda Revo when it comes to comparing it to the stock. It's not any worse so far than the stock nozzle hot end. So, everybody does benchies for test prints. Um, but I found this cute stackable cat. Um, test is over, has a lot of similar things as Benchy and testing with overhangs and other things. Um, and, uh, I like switching it up a little bit. If I can get this to focus, there we go. Um, great print, um, right here, you know, all the overhangs is print, printed like I expect. And here is the same print and I'm on the Panda Revo. Um, did notice a slight issue here where this one bridge, yep, yeah, I don't know what happened there. It may be because of the Panda Jet and blowing more air, or better air. And the other issue I had is right here on the seam, uh, toward the very base of the seam, it does look a little rough. Um, I really don't have an answer for that. But overall, I think the quality is pretty similar. Um... I mean, here they are side by side. I do find that the, on the Panda Revo, I do like how the top finish is a little bit better in stock. I might have had a little bit of under extrusion right here with the stock one. Saving the best for last, the Max Flow Test. You stop the print where it starts failing, and you take calibers and measure in millimeters what that distance is. In this case, it's around 12.5 to 12.49. You take that measurement and you add 10 millimeters. So in my case, this would be 22.49 millimeters would be my max flow rate for the stock nozzle. As you can already see, the test with the Panda Revo, the test print is a little bit larger. It actually is measuring around 22 to 23 millimeters. I'll be on the safe side and say 22, you add 10 to that, so the max flow would be 32.37. That's a 10 millimeter per second cubed increase from the stock nozzle. Um, that's just at 220 degrees Celsius. Um, if you look at the documentation and the advertised speed of 40 millimeters per cubed second uh, per second, that was done at 260 degrees Celsius. So I could probably push this film in a little bit farther if I wanted to. The overall insulation of both the Panda Jet and the Panda Revo was pretty straightforward. Inside the packaging for each was a QR code that you'd scan and lead you to a very detailed uh, set of instructions. I think if I wasn't filming, I probably could have got this done in about 
10 minutes for both of them. But with filming, adjusting camera angles, making sure I got the shot the best I could, it took me around 20 minutes. After You really can't tell with the editing, but it's about 20 minutes for the install process. As far as print quality on the Panda Revo, I didn't really notice any increase or decrease in print quality. And that's a good thing, as the Bamboo Lab hot end is already a really good hot end right out the gate. And the testing did reveal the increase of 10 millimeters per cubed on the flow rate. And I think I could push this film a little bit farther if I increase the temperature. So what are my takeaways? Well, I got two. First of all, if you want fast and easy nozzle swaps, this hot end upgrade is actually pretty good for that. Uh, you literally just unscrew it and screw the new one in. Um, if you're sw swapping between nozzle sizes a lot, or you just want fast nozzle swaps in the future when you have to replace your nozzle, this is great for that. Secondly, I think this hot end would really shine when paired with a .6 uh, nozzle. With .4, sure, I do get higher flows, but I think the higher flows would be a lot better with a .6 nozzle for as far as gaining speed goes. Now, about the three items I talked about in this video. Would I, what would I recommend? First of all, the build plates, both the Frostbite and the Glacier. I didn't get a chance to really test the Glacier. Um, I want to buy some ABS in the future and really test that out. But for the Frostbite, I bought one myself months ago for my A1. And I I love the build plate. Things just stick to it. It's only PLA and PETG, but it works really good. Um, you get to print at a lower temperature, and like I said, PLA just sticks to it. The Panda Jet. Not really a whole lot to say on the Panda Jet. It looks unique. Um, it's definitely lighter. Um, if you like the aesthetic of the Panda sh Jet, I say go for it. But is it a must-have upgrade? No. But it is still pretty cool. And lastly, the Panda Revo hot end. The, I'm going to start off saying this isn't cheap. Um, on the BQ website right now, it the non-sale price is $150. Um, and that's not a small chunk of sum for most people. But nozzles do need replacing eventually. They're consumable. The Revo does make that process super quick with their quick swap nozzles. And it also does increase the flow rate compared to the stock nozzle. So if you're looking for quick swappable nozzles on the Bamboo Lab, uh, P1S or P1P or X1C, it's a great option uh, to at least look into. Um, or if you, do you think you're going to be printing with a larger nozzle that you want more flow rate on? It's another option. But like I said, with a base price of $150 when not on sale, it's definitely something that you're going to think about. It's not bad nozzle. So I get, but at that price point, if it works for your budget, great. If not, stick with stock in my opinion. I do want to send a big thank you to uh, BQ for sending out these upgrades for the P1S for me to test. Really appreciate that. Thank you.